One second, you're gulping down the most delicious milkshake you've ever had, and the next, your head is throbbing in horrendous pain. All good things must come to an end, they say, but why does it have to be such a terrible one? The mind-aching side effects of indulging just a little too much in our favorite icy treat actually has a scientific name, sphenopalpatine ganglion neuralgia. While that probably means nothing to you, the brain freeze E, it means a lot to doctors and researchers that have spent time trying to understand why brain freezes happen. When you place something ice cold or colder in your mouth that thus comes in contact with your soft palate, it touches a small bundle of nerves near the back of your mouth. This group of nerves we can all thank for the brain freeze effect is called the sphenopalpatine ganglion, or SPG. It's sensitive to cold, and when stimulated by this sensation, triggers the brain to feel a headache. While the SPG may just sound like a biological curse to stop us from eating too much ice cream, it actually has more functional uses as well. Scientists have been looking into this clump of nerves for years now and found that they are responsible for many types of migraine or cluster headaches. That has led to further funding to try and understand how manipulation of the SPG could prevent such medical conditions. Researchers have discovered two main methods of stopping the SPG from causing these headaches, using a numbing agent or electronic stimulation. Ultimately, these treatments might be a little bit severe if you're just trying to drink your Slurpee faster, but they have proven effective to migraine prevention. Surprisingly, when some people trigger the SPG causing a brain freeze, it can stop the symptoms of worse headaches, such as migraines. Scientists aren't sure what causes this relievement of migraine symptoms, but for many, it does work. So we now know that when the SPG nerve gets too cold, it triggers the brain to have a headache. But why? It must prove some evolutionary advantage to actual use. The stark and painful reaction to cold is actually a biological reaction to keep your brain at the right temperature. When we drink or eat something cold, it causes the arteries in our mouth to rapidly dilate and contract. The SPG is triggered by this change in flow and then sends a message to your brain through the trigeminal nerve. That tells your brain that it should be experiencing pain, but there's one problem the brain doesn't have any pain-sensing fibers. However, the brain's covering, called the meninges, does. This causes the nerve signal from the SPG to be realized by the meninges, causing a painful headache in the top of your head. All of this seemingly misplaced pain is just your head trying to figure out what's going on. Biologically speaking, this pain response is similar to what people going through a heart attack feel. You don't feel like your heart is hurting. Rather, it's your shoulder and your left side that realize the pain response. In effect, your brain has to do its best in interpreting and communicating what's wrong using the pain sensors it has. In the case of brain freeze, the headache reaction keeps us from eating more ice cream, thus keeping the brain's temperature at a healthy state. The brain usually likes to stay in a resting range of 98.6 to 100.4, but it can get much colder without damage under supervision. Surgeons will often chill the brain out to 68 degrees to correct circulation and other brain issues with no lasting damage, but all under sedation. Ultimately, the SPG is in place to help protect the brain from slipping out of its optimal state, but it can handle it. That means that if you can deal with the skull aching pain of a brain freeze, you can keep slurping if you'd like. So now that we understand a little bit more about the functionality and cause of brain freeze, how do we stop it? The best method for treating brain freeze once you have it is to press your tongue or thumb up to the roof of your mouth. This relative warmth of your tongue or thumb rapidly warms the SPG, which then tells your brain to stop the pain response. You can also cover your mouth and nose and breathe into your hands to circulate warm air that then raises the temperature of the soft palate as well. To prevent brain freeze, you can eat the cold food near the front of your mouth away from the SPG or eat it slower, giving your palate time to adjust. 
In the end, brain freezes aren't dangerous, but they do trigger a harsh pain response by the brain as it thinks it needs to protect itself. Research on the sphenopalpatine ganglion group of nerves will continue for the foreseeable future as researchers try to understand and prevent migraines for a large portion of the population.